you lot watching, you subscribers, loyal subscribers of mine are crazy. 455 comments on my YouTube community post asking for your hottest F1 takes, your most controversial F1 opinions. I wanna do a reaction style video. I thought this was the great opportunity. I've got a cider, obviously. We're chilled. We're having a nice little relaxing talk through your weird and wonderful F1 opinions. Also to anyone who doesn't know, I've got, it's not an official McLaren OnePlus, but I've got a D-brand skin, which makes it look very, very sexy, my OnePlus 7 Pro. I'm gonna start with the top comments, the ones that got the most upvotes, and then eventually I'll just randomly pick some. So top comment is from Nathan Butler. He says, Alonso wasn't unlucky. Him not winning more championships is his own fault for being so toxic at every team he went to. Raikkonen, on the other hand, genuinely had some of the worst luck for a large portion of his career. I'm going to focus on the Alonso point <laughs> because many of you know that I very much I very much agree with you, Nathan. This is not a hot take for me. Um, I think Alonso's toxicity and his, uh, his lack of being able to work harmoniously in teams contributed to him to him not winning nearly as many championships as his talent, which was immeasurable and incredible. I'll be the first to say that. Um, he would have won a lot more, yes, if he wasn't so toxic and a bit of a bitch at times. So fair play, Nathan. I agree with you, mate. Then Han Zhang says, Senna is overrated. People see him as a deity of sorts in F1 law. And I think a large part of that has to do with the fact that he's passed away in the middle of his F1 career. Despite him being once a generation driver, we see his legacy through rose-tinted glasses. So I did touch on this point in the Senna Pross video that I did put out. As much as I still think Senna is without doubt one of the greatest of all time in terms of talent, of course, of course, the, the fact that he died at his peak and the fact that he was so absolutely adored in Brazil has contributed significantly into how he's, you know, held, the esteem that he's held in, the fact that he is one of the most famous Formula One drivers of all time, for sure. Overrated, I would say slightly, yes, but he's still very much like, he he's without a doubt to be considered amongst Fangio, Schumacher, Clark, Hamilton, you know what I mean? Like, he's definitely up there. Um, but for me, he's not the very best. He is... Yeah, the rose tinted glasses, I do think they're a thing. I'm agreeing with these so far. Next from Hello Everybody. Raikkonen should have had at least three world championships and is one of the most talented drivers on the grid, even at his age. And he does not look 40. He does not look 40. He looks great for 40, considering the amount of drinking that Kimi probably does. He looks fantastic for 40 years old. I'm not, I'm not massively feeling this one. I do rate Kimi. I do rate Raikkonen. I think he... He was progressing in a generation that had some fantastic drivers. Schumacher, Hakkinen, Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso, loads of quality drivers left, right and centre. Maybe he should have won more, but I'm, I'm not massively behind this one, I'll be honest. Then Stuart Ree says, Antonio Giovinazzi is an awful driver, literally crashes on his own merit all the time, and it is a joke. He's in the Ferrari Academy. It's a yoke. Ridiculous that he is in F1 and drivers like Hulkenberg aren't. So I think the start of last season, Giovinazzi wasn't quite there. Towards the end, he was very much outperforming Kimi. Now, obviously, how much of that is Kimi just kind of being like, whatever, chill? Because we know how chill Kimi is and he's he's probably not as arsed as he used to be. I wouldn't say he's an awful driver. I think that's very much a, that's a bit harsh, Stuart, I'll be honest. But... I get where you're coming from. I don't think he's proven himself yet. I think he's got more to do. But I'm interested. I'm, I'm excited to see what Antonio delivers this season when it eventually starts. Arthur Rule says, Kobayashi was underrated, was unlucky not to have a longer career. And also Pascal Verline was underrated just because he was at teams towards the back of the field. Definitely agree on Kobayashi. I don't really know about... I don't really know enough about Pascal Verline. But Kobayashi, for sure, he was... Mustard. He was different gravy. I loved Kamui. Yes, I agree. He should have had a longer career. He, yeah, maybe he was a little bit accident prone, but he did have the raw pace, and he was a much better. You know, he was a much better accident prone driver than Maldonado. I think Kobayashi, if he'd been given the chance, would have been right. I mean, you sit like he's got. Isn't he got the lap record at Le Mans? I think he has, and it's just unreal. He's definitely got the talent for sure. Kamui. Kamui should be an F one. I agree. Tate Evans says, Monaco should be dropped from the calendar. As cars get faster and longer, they are less and less suited for that circuit every year. Tate, I'm afraid I'm going to have to completely disagree with you on this one, mate. I'm sorry. But Monaco 
is levels, right? Look, listen, there's so many different, we've got 20 plus races, right, in the calendar. There's something for everyone. There's loads of quality, wheel to wheel, like proper like, overtakey tracks, great quality. Monaco fills a very unique part of that grid, right? It's unlike any other race. Yes, overtakes don't particularly happen in the race, okay? But that qualifying session is unreal. That is that qualifying session is by far away the best qualifying session of the of the year. The environment, how unique it is, I think it's a staple, and I I would be gutted if they dropped to Monaco. And as well, bear in mind with the new tech regs coming in, the cars will get a bit smaller. They'll get a bit more compact. They'll get a bit easier to overtake. It doesn't need to be a car park, Monaco. It doesn't need to be, and I don't think it will long term. The F1 cars at the moment, yes, you, you're right. They are the biggest they've ever been. They're, they're huge. They're massive, bloody narrow boats, right? It won't be like that forever. I, I, the tech regs will make them smaller, and it will be indicative to better racing. They'll be able to follow better, blah, 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 all that good stuff. I'm, af I'm afraid, Tate, I don't agree with you, mate. PDR TV says, if Suzuka 2014 would have been cancelled, Jules would have been at Ferrari alongside Sebastian for the 2015, 16, 17-ish. And with the rise of Charles, Sebastian would have been dropped by Ferrari in 2019. So it would have basically been Jules and Charles at Ferrari. And Sebastian would have been back at Mercedes. Jules had so much potential. We'll never know truly. The problem is, the Sauber that um, Charles was driving in his first season was much more competitive than the Mauritia was in Jules' first season in Formula 1. It's hard to make a direct comparison. Um, I mean, I hope so. Like Everyone had such kind words about Jules, not just as a driver, but as a, as a human being. And his talent was, as far as I've heard and, and read, was up there. G-Car says, hybrid V6s sound good in their own futuristic pod race away, living three miles away from Silverstone, sitting in the garden watching the Reds. And here in the V8s and V10s, Raw to Life was a highlight of mine in my early childhood. But I think if you bash and scold the sport for joining 21st century rules, you aren't a true fan. Woo! That's a hot take. I like the V6. I like the current engines as they are. I mean, yes, watching replays back, that that V10 screen, great. But I, I'm not harking back for it either, mate, to be honest. I'm agreeing with most of you here. Maybe I'm just... Maybe, there, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe, probably. Daisy Miriam says, the young kid and the veteran is the best driving combination in a team. I guess on paper, it should be, right? I mean, I guess we'll see from, you know, Norris and Ricardo. Not only will they be great banter, but you've got a lovely little youngster and old-time veteran. Plenty of years in Formula 1, Ricardo's had. So I think Lando stands to learn a lot from Daniel. So I think, yeah, I, I, I can deal with this. I can deal with this take. Madafar Adawa. I'm really sorry if I mispronounced your name, mate. Not really a hot take, but I say Hamilton is underrated and people think he's winning only because of, of his car. Look, this, this sport, ain't, this ain't football, right? You can't, you can't compare. You're never going to be able to truly compare drivers like you can with other sports because everyone's got different machinery. Everyone's starting in... in or, yeah, it's not a level playing field. It's never going to be a truly level playing field unless you make it a complete spec series, which I don't think many of us want and I don't want. I definitely think Lewis gets more stick than he deserves um, about him only always being in the best car. But he's the best driver, so that's why he gets those opportunities. As far as I'm concerned... I completely agree with you. LM005 says, Ricardo is the most underrated driver and could definitely win a championship with a better team. I agree. Asan Idris, this isn't a hot take, mate, because everyone agrees with you. Brazil should be the last race of the season. 100%, of course. LVNNA says, the halo looks great and it has been well implemented in the car. Great addition in both design and safety. Cannot think of F1 without it anymore. I completely agree. Look, no one likes change. When the F1 logo changed, everyone was up in arms and complaining. Look, it's the halo that basically saved Charles's head from being ripped off when bloody uh, Alonso was punted over him by Grosjean. No, Hulkenberg. <laughs> Obviously, I thought it was Grosjean. Now they've been able to implement it into the design of the kite. It looks flowing. It looks elegant. It looks seamless. I'm very, a I'm very big fan of the halo. Good shout. Right, let's go to some silly ones. So, Joe Show says scorching hot take ricardo will go on a multi-championship run once he makes the move to mclaren look i've got a lot of faith in mclaren all right andreas seidel as far as i'm concerned he's like my dream man okay but <laughs> multi-championship run probably a bit of a stretch but I, i'd love to see it don't get me wrong i would love to see it 
Here we go. Wizkid was, says Lance Stroll, has more than earned and kept his spot on the F1 grid, regardless of what his father has done. Completely agree. Like I said, yes, when he first started in F1, he didn't deserve it. He didn't merit that opportunity, but he was given that opportunity and now his talent has moved on and developed and he performs well, I think. And he does now deserve his spot, so I agree. Kenny Rifke says, Kubica will beat Alonso if he didn't have the accident. Kubica was mad talented. You never heard of Kubica ruffling too many feathers in teams. Obviously, he ruffled a few, didn't he, at Williams. But you get it, because it was a it was a car. I'm inclined to agree with that. As much as I think Alonso's quality, I think Kubica was next level. He dominated in carts, man. He had so much talent. It was such a shame what happened, man. We were denied a proper world championship contender there in Robert Kubica. I really think that. Ooh, here we go. Augusto Cesar Gerber. Again, apologies for the pronunciation. Fangio and the drivers back in the 50s were not that good and not the best drivers available, just decent pilots with money. Their biggest traits besides that were courage and the ability not to die, not their racing. Oh, that's a hot take. That's the one I've been waiting for. Any driver who raced back in that era, man, you've got to you've got to have some next level respect for the fact that they just put themselves out there in a car that would probably kill them if they did, you know, if they hit that curb slightly wrong, if that not it's completely out of their control as well. If someone binned it in front of them, like we'll never be able to truly compare. Of course, like talent exists now as much as much as it did back then. I'm sure, like you look at like someone like Jim Clark. For me, Jim Clark is goat material, and he passed before his time. Like he had an accident, killed him. I think it's unfair to say that they were not as good. Matthew Skidmore says the ING Renault livery from 2007 to 9 is pretty decent. Yes, I know it's controversial, but I still think blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it's not, Matthew. I'm afraid you are wrong. Cameron Romeo says, I actually love the Haas 2019 livery. It was completely different from the whole grid, even though they had the weird situation with rich energy. The livery still banged. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't love the livery. I didn't hate it. Like, I, I appreciated what they were going for with the whole John Player special hark back. The execution could have been better, um, to be honest. And obviously, yeah, regardless of the rich energy nonsense, like, I think it was a good livery. It could have been better. It wasn't as bad as I think some people think it is because ultimately I, I get that people don't like it because rich energy are clearly some, like, wank company. But whatever, man, I'll I rate it. And last comment from David Panama. Pastor Maldo did nothing wrong. It's the car's fault. I'm going to have to disagree with you there, mate. Look, I, I, I think Pastor had a lot of you know, natural talent. He could certainly smash it in one lap and he could certainly dice with the best. But his accident proneness wasn't just reserved for his Formula One career. It was throughout his journey, junior career. And the reason I know that is because of my boy, Josh Ravel, my favourite Kiwi. He dropped a video on Pastel Maldonado. I made a little feature as well. A link above. Give that a watch. Nice little segue. We'll call it a day. Thank you everyone, really appreciate you all taking the time to drop a comment on my YouTube community. I try and interact as much as I can on there um, because I love kind of chatting to you guys, speaking to you guys, you almost saw my hair there. Thank you again as ever for watching. Please don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe down below if you're new and you want to see more and hit that notification bell. Boom, so that you see my videos when they drop. My name's been Tomo, this is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel. Thanks again, have a good one. Ta-da.